Hello everyone, welcome again in Engman YouTube channel. So in this video, we will continue our geoscience series. And today's topic is about gamma ray lock response and depositional environment. Once again, I'm not a geologist, I'm not a geoscientist, so I'm not teaching you right now. I'm just sharing with you what I've just learned. All right, so we have three gamma ray lock patterns here. And from these patterns, from these profiles, we can correlate the, the locks with the depositional environment of the reservoir. Okay, so we have three profiles here and we can read it together. So the first one here, we have blocky gamma ray lock profile. So maybe you can say the keyword is blocky. So whenever your friends, your geologists or your petrophysists say blocky, something like blocky gamma ray lock, you can capture the, the case here. And we can correlate this blocky gamma ray lock profile with, you can see here, characteristic of sandwich gravity flow deposits. Okay, so that's our first note here. So if you see blocky here, like you have high gamma ray, maybe it's shield, and then it goes to left, we find reservoir here, Okay, but it's it looks blocky, right? And then you see gamma ray lock increases again, high gamma ray lock again, shell again. So maybe shell, shell, and here we have maybe reservoir. But the reservoir, the gamma ray lock profile, GR lock profile of the reservoir seems blocky, looks blocky. And we can analyze or maybe we can predict or we can guess that the reservoir or the depositional environment of the reservoir is of the sandwich gravity flow deposits. Okay, as engineer, we are not very familiar with this environment, this depositional environment or this facies. Yeah, so we can just communicate or we can ask our geoscientist friends. Okay, but we can capture this. If it is blocky gamma ray lock, then you keep that information and you can correlate it with the sandwich gravity flow deposit. Uh, that's the first one. And the second one, on the middle of the picture here, we have upward decreasing gamma ray lock profile. So upward, why it's upward? So it's like this. So upward, it goes up decreasing. Okay, so the gamma ray lock decreases, okay? when it goes to the upper level, right? So first we have high gamma ray, gamma ray, so it's shale maybe, and then high gamma ray again, shale, and this is our reservoir. But the gamma ray lock profile gives us the pattern of upward decreasing gamma ray. And we can correlate this pattern with, you can see here, prograding sand bodies, such as shore face, and moth bars deposit. Okay, again, maybe as engineers, we are not very familiar with shore face, facies or moth bar deposits, but of course we can, we can ask our geoscientist friends, what's the significance of the reservoir being from shore face deposit or moth bar deposits, right? And lastly, we have upward increasing gamma ray lock profile. So we have again high gamma ray means shale or yeah, something like that. It can be our boundary, top and bottom boundary, right? And shale again, and this is our reservoir. But you see the gamma ray increases when it goes upward. So upward increasing gamma ray lock profile. This is the characteristics of channel field or point bars. So maybe we are in a channel reservoir. Okay, again, we can talk, we can discuss, we can communicate with our geoscientist friends. What's the significance of these patterns? Okay, but maybe we can simplify the significance of it, the importance of it for both the geoscientists and engineers. So for them, for our geoscientist friends, these patterns can guide them to predict the size of the reservoir. Okay, maybe it's not it's not exact, 
prediction. It, it, it's not exact computation, but it gives them the first or the early idea how big the reservoir will be, how the size of the reservoir will be. Okay, from getting the information of the deposit like sand ridge, gravity flow, or shore phase or channel fill, channel reservoir, point bar, they have the first guess whether the reservoir will be big or maybe it's just small reservoir. So based on the log, they can guess, they can have the early prediction. So that's the first one. In, and of course, that's very important. And the second importance is it will guide the geology interpolation in the gap between wells. We are handling big reservoir, but we have very limited data from the logs, right? We only drill some wells and we capture log from those wells. That's it. That's the idea. That's the data that we have, but we must interpolate using this limited data. We have to interpolate and we have to predict the gap between the wells. All right, this zone, this gap has no well, has no data, and we must interpolate the geology in this gap using the limited log data. So using this gamma ray pattern, we can infer or we can maybe predict the gap between the well, all right? The continuity, the connectivity, something like that, okay? So the geoscientists can... Yeah, this is the guidance for geologists to, you know, to interpolate the geology between the wells, the connectivity, the continuity, and then the shale distribution, something like that, right? So at least those two are the significance for the geoscientists. And what about for us engineers? Is it important? Is it important for us to know whether the gamma ray looks blocky or upward decreasing or upward increasing, something like that? Yes, it's quite important as well. Because by knowing the gamma ray, the gamma ray log pattern and by inferring the depositional environment of our reservoir, we can predict how the reservoir performance will be. So maybe you can read literature and you read papers and then you communicate, you discuss with geoscientist friends, you can have rough idea how the performance will be for channel reservoir. How good is the performance of channel reservoir? How good is the performance of moth bar reservoir, of shore face reservoir? Okay, so yeah, by knowing the depositional environment, you can have a first guess or rough idea of how the reservoir performance will be, okay? And that's very important. And of course, you need to compare that information with the, you know, the, the actual well performance, the water cut, the gas oil ratio, and then the production, something like that. But all of this information coming from the depositional environment evaluation and coming from the production and pressure data they enrich each other, okay? They complement each other. And of course, that's very important. All right, so that's all. So in this video, we have learned about gamma ray log response and how we can correlate those response with the depositional environments of the reservoir, all right? I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this video is useful. Thank you so much for watching and see you again in the next Engman videos. Thank you.